So today we're going to talk about the timing cover for the Buick. Um, I got in a discussion with some of the guys over at uh, on the Facebook page, and for whatever reason, I feel that they were under the impression that if you change the the high pressure bypass spring, you can raise the old pressure of your engine, which it's partly true. If your engine produces enough back pressure to actuate the spring, uh, pretty much this will control your high RPM oil pressure. But if your engine clearances are loose, or you have a spun bearing, uh, or I don't know, crack block, or a broken lifter, or a over uh, undersized lifters, or a bunch of different things that would cause the engine to f bleed out the oil faster than the pump can supply it, this spring is pretty much useless. So today I wanted to talk about this so I can clarify what I was trying to explain to them, which I guess uh, they're kind of set in their ways. <laughs> so whatever I said was just talking to the wind, but whatever. Um, I'm going to go over both of these today and I'm going to show you some of the mods that you can do and what those mods get you. So, uh, if you're not familiar with this cover at all, this is the front of your engine, your crank will be coming through here, or crank snout, and this will go here, right? Now, uh, when you have a high volume pump, you'll have a spacer plate, and then you have gears that are taller than the case. Uh, a uh, stock set of gears will sit flush in here. Uh, I believe you need uh, 2000 clearance uh, max. You would bolt this on here and the, the gears will right here as you, like I said, you can obviously tell. And as the camshaft spins, it will spin the cam sensor gear which in turn spins the shaft for the drive gear that would go here. So cam sensor would be come in through here the shaft for the gear come out through that hole, which is that one right there. And then you have your idler gear. So oil is being fed through this hole. Uh, these two would feed oil, but this I believe is for the V8 applications. So oil goes in through this hole, goes up that slot, and comes out through the back. And actually that's really bad lighting, so let's see if I can fix that. So Oil comes in through this hole, down the slot, and you can see at the bottom of the slot, there's a hole. So oil would pull up here, go up, and then drop back down onto the low pressure side or the feed side of the pump. Now, gears will spin, uh, pressurize the oil, send it up through that hole that comes out through this slot. From that slot, it goes into the oil filter adapter and then you have that slot that goes to the outer radius of the filter oil goes through the filter back out the center and into this hole now this hole comes out over here and if you can see I'm putting the light on it you can see light through there now the other the other two uh, bypasses you have here are the oil filter bypass and a high pressure bypass. Now, a lot of people block this off. I feel there's no reason to do that. Why? So here we go with a little better lighting. So the only way this will actuate is if there's a pressure difference between the outer radius of the filter and the inside radius of the filter. Now you'll get that if there's a blockage on the filter and honestly I can't think of anything other than a blockage on the filter and it would have to be a pretty significant blockage for it to cause a pressure differential through the filter. Um, you might have some bypassing on really cold oil because the way that that makes sense is because pressurized oil is going in through here so there's pressurized oil here and that same pressure is going to be through the filter and into the engine pretty much. Uh, you, you really gotta wrap your head around the fact that both sides of the oil filter are under the same pressure unless the filter is blocked. Unless you have a really dirty oil filter. I, I really can't think of any other reason why. But anyways, so going back to the way that this works. Um, so pressurized oil go, goes through here 
and then you have the two bypasses, as I said. Now, this bypass, uh, oil that went in through this hole is going to come out through this one, and this bypass is connected to the same side. So now, what happens here is that the resistance to flow that the engine's putting into that's creating your oil pressure would build up. Let's say that we have that we're on a on a cold cold start, and your oil pressure is really high. At that point, this would actuate, and it would come back, and pretty much this would this would back up, open just enough to let oil bleed onto the feed side of the pump and start over. And that's how it would bypass oil pressure. Now, uh, at the same time, the real purpose of that, the actual purpose of this is to control your high RPM oil pressure, which at high RPM on a freshly built engine, your oil pressure will go, if, if you were to block this off, it'll, your oil pressure will definitely go above 100 and probably your cam gear might break or the shaft on the gear might come loose, which I've seen uh, where they crack in between the, in the webs of the, of the gears. But anyway, the reason why I feel that some of the guys that I was talking to, they might have, they might have a, uh, an erroneous understanding of uh, what's happening here is that they say that you can raise your engine oil pressure by changing the spring. And that is partly true, but that's assuming that the engine clearances are within specs and allowing pressure to build on this side, on the pressure side, which is feeding. This is going back into the cover through this hole right here. And this is going back into the cover through this hole right here and coming out the top right here. Um, so the theory behind changing the spring is assuming that you have a good engine with good clearances. If your engine is loose and let's say at high RPM you're only seeing 40 PSI but you have a 70 pound spring, it doesn't matter what spring you put in there, your oil pressure is not going to go up. And if you have that scenario, you probably have no oil pressure at idle. Well, I mean you might have, but very low oil pressure at idle. So now, since this is one of those topics where uh, seeing is believing, um, I'm going to show you with a flashlight here. And let me see if you can see that. You see that? So that's connected to that. And now I want to see, I'm going to light it up through the back here and see if I can actually, because that's staked in there, I want to really, it's really hard to see, but... See that? You can see the flashlight through there. Let me move it around so you know it's a flashlight. See? So this, this, and this are all connected together. Now, once the oil leaves the oil filter adapter, it goes in through this hole, up here, out through here, back into the block, into uh, the lifter galleys. So now that I've shown you how how this works, I'm going to show you some of the mods that you can do to improve upon this design. Now, none of these mods will raise your oil pressure significantly. Um, I hear a lot of people say that they did they enlarged this hole and did this and that and uh, it raised their oil pressure and technically it should do the opposite. By modifying these parts, what you're doing is reducing the resistance to flow, which in turn, technically, on paper at least, it should lower your oil pressure because there's less resistance to flow. That's the definition of oil pressure. So these mods are not going to help an engine that is already worn and has very low oil pressure. The only, the only thing these mods are going to do is remove some of the stress that the gear, the shaft, can cam sensor gear and camshaft gear uh, will see from pushing this oil through the engine. This, I, I did not come up with these mods. I learned about them through reading the forums and the Facebook pages and seeing what other people were doing. With my background, I kind of pick and choose what I like to use. Uh, I don't want to say that 
some of them are wrong, but I will show you why I think some things were designed the way that they were designed, what you can expect out of doing these mods. So the most popular mod I see on these covers is to enlarge this hole to a half inch. So pretty much you just grab your half inch drill bit, drive it in all the way up, do the same on the back side, drive it in all the way down. Uh, make sure that you don't take out too much out of the back, the back part right here because this is not very deep. As you can see, I mean, this is already almost paper thin. Um, I can show you that real quick. So when you're removing material here, you got to watch out that you don't take out too much because as you can see, there's not very much to uh, remove there. So in the spirit of the video, I'm going to do the modification just to show you that it's very simple to do and pretty much, like I said, your half inch drill bit. Line it up with the hole and go to town. So drill bit in place. So as you can see by the oh, focus, let me see, there you go, it's a lot easier. So as you can see, the drill bit, I took it up to there and then I don't want to take out anymore because again, that side is super thin, that side is super thin, so you just want to be careful not to break onto the outside of your cover. So with this side done, same thing over here. So that is pretty much it. So now that I have that done, so that was really quick. As you can see, it's half inch. Now you can take this modification a step further and radius that in. Uh, I found it easier that uh, to grab a like thin strips of sandpaper and run them in through the hole and just kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to get a really nice and smooth radius. So once you're done enlarging the holes, uh, make sure that you dress these edges. Um, you can do that with a countersunk bit or like I do, just a uni bit. And hit it up real quick. Now it's smooth. So over here that doesn't work, so you need another bit and that's what I have this one for. and edges are dressed. So that's about as much as I would modify the, the cover. Um, there are people that I believe it's called the Errol Brown modification or whatever. Um, they open up a gap here and uh, the theory is that you're making it easier for the, the oil instead of having to go up and drop back down the oil is going in and straight through. Now, the problem with that is that from my engineering perspective and from the perspective of a couple others, uh, as I read on the forums, is that uh, the sole purpose of having that is to keep these gears under oil. Because if you notice, this is the lowest point on this whole assembly. And if you drill a hole here, all their oil drains back onto the pan. So your oil, so your gears will become unsubmerged over after a long time of sitting and then you have priming issues. Um, again, I'm not criticizing that mod. I'm just giving you the reasoning behind why I don't bother with that. Um, some other things that you can do, again, you can run a piece of sandpaper through there, bring it out the other side and kind of radius, just pulling it back and forth. You can kind of radius that uh, upper opening and again just make it easier for the oil to flow but uh, 
neither one of these modifications is going to give you higher oil pressure. So every single one of these that I have encountered um, already have a half inch opening here. So as you can see, I can already stick this bit and I haven't drilled this out or anything. And yeah, uh, other than like, for example, this one, I wouldn't use this. I would lap it. So as you can tell by this, somebody's lapped this before. And uh, whenever you go lap it, you're going to have the issue that you're going to be sending this out as well. Uh, none of these scratches are really deep, so this is still salvageable. And although I really wanted to cut it open so I could just show you um, that all these bypasses are connected together and they're all connected to this, um, I feel it's the, the point's made. It's clear. And um, so, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Um, another thing that... Uh, a lot of people uh, usually wonder is uh, about the sandwich plate, which uh, pretty much attaches to this, and this attaches it to that, and that's how that works. It has oil rings in between, and this is cooling the oil before it goes through the filter. Um, as you can see, oil would go into the outer radius of the filter, but it finds this sandwich plate in, before it. So oil goes out, goes through the cooler, comes back in, onto the outer radius of the filter, goes through the filter, and then would come right through here, back into there. So this doesn't really change anything. And uh, this uh, bypass here, again, would only be bypassing the cooler. So to end this video, I just wanted to summarize what I just went over. Um, pretty much, any modifications you do to the system are not, it's not going to raise your oil pressure. If anything, it'll make it drop because all you were doing is removing some of the resistance to flow, which the main benefit would be that it takes away stress from the gear system um, in the cover. And then and then that no matter what spring you shove in here, whether you have your wipe, your 40, 50, 60, 70, I don't care, 100, or plug it, if your engine does not offer the resistance to flow it will never actuate the spring. And that is only controlling your high RPM oil pressure. So if you have really low pressure or idle, uh, it's time for a rebuild. Um, unless there's some other issue where oil escaping, like, a, like I mentioned before, it could be undersized uh, lifters or can, uh, bearings are out of spec too large. Um, you really just need to rebuild your engine. That's the only way that you can really get desirable oil pressure, which on these engines, it looks like, uh, based on the manual, I believe it's uh, like seven to 15 at idle. These engines didn't really have marvelous amounts of oil pressure to begin with. So yeah, um, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it helps you make an informed decision on any modifications, any modifications that you would like to make to your timing cover. I just wanted to make it clear that no matter what mods you do to this, the timing cover and your oil filter adapter, you're not going to get higher oil pressure. Oil pressure is resistance to flow, and if there's no resistance, there's no oil pressure. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share this with anybody that may find it helpful.